So this video is on using the double pulse technology within the AFG 31052 to test out some MOSFETs. Uh, the particular MOSFETs I'm testing are from insulation testers. So I'm just looking at their dynamic capability and how they affect the operation of insulation testers. The first aspect is to load the double pulse software from Tektronix. You have to download this from the Tektronix website which I did need to actually log into and you have down here now from the main menu and add apps so deep pulse is where I've put it and there's the double pulse login that's its file name um, click OK um, that loads pretty quick Okay, so we need to power off and then back on. You see it has actually loaded in there, but we'll do the power off that it asks for. Uh, the only other thing to be aware of with the double pulse software is it needed the latest version of the firmware, which this already had, so I haven't had to upgrade that. Okay, there we go, and there's the double pulse software, and there it is, seems to have loaded up fine. Um, so now we can move on to actually setting up a test. Okay, so we are set up for our double pulse test. The device that's soldered into the evaluation board is the LR3410, that's a 100 volt MOSFET. I'm showing this one because it's the MOSFET I've found to be the most common in the insulation testers that I've reviewed so I've found it in the Dialog, uh, Fleur, Fluke, RS Pro, Upper Technology, uh, Xtech all those insulation testers use this device to switch the high voltage transformer within the insulation tester to provide the high voltage output and you can see I've set up here if I just reposition okay so here's my evaluation board uh, there's my two MOSFETs and at the back here I've got the high voltage pulse transformer that is being switched by the two MOSFETs um, so channel one is on the oscilloscope will be this one here this is looking at the drain source voltage on MOSFET 2 I've got the channel 2 is looking at the actual pulse coming off of the driver chip so ultimately it's the pulse being driven by the AFG 31052 and then channel 4 when I've got it switched on is the actual voltage across the pulse transformer that's being switched by the MOSFET that's actually going through a differential unit here okay so that's the differential probe that's across the voltage transformer and then this here is measuring the current, which is another uh, differential probe on the clip-on CT. And then if we zoom out. Okay, so here on the left, I've got my Regal power supply that's supplying nine volts into the board that the MOSFET is using to switch on and off onto the transformer. Uh, obviously my scope. And then there's another power supply behind the uh, function generator that's just providing 12 volts into the evaluation board to power the driver chip so the 12 volt supply comes in on this side of the board to provide the auxiliary supply to the driver chip um, originally when I set this board up I had it powered from 5 volts and I couldn't get it to function uh, it was somebody that pointed out to me that the board has a lockout for anything below 10 volts so once I switched up to 12 volts chip works fine so at the moment I've set the function generator up on a manual trigger so it'll be just one pulse and I've got the uh, scope set up on a single shot and if I hit the uh, go button there you can see I've produced my waveforms um, but they are especially the current is actually quite noisy so what I've been doing really is setting this to an averaging mode Not that one. 
So it's to an average in mode. And then I need to then change this so that it pulses out continuously. Put on a timer and it just goes out on a millisecond. And I'll run him and run that. And we see now we get a much cleaner response from the curves. Yeah, okay, so there you can see there's my switching response here. Is this VGS on channel two? Is the gate voltage? See the first pulse and then the second pulse. Um, because I'm measuring across the MOSFET effectively, when the MOSFET is off, I see the high nine volts on channel one up here, and then when the MOSFET turns on, it drops down to zero, back up again when it's turned off, and back down on again for the second pulse. And then this is my current showing going through the MOSFET. Okay, so that's the basic overview of the double pulse test from the AFG31052. Thanks for watching. Uh, hopefully it's been useful to some people and I'll see you again in the next video.